So I'm very excited about our new plug and play ATC controller for the Maso G3, which would also apply to most of the controllers that we've integrated with. This new plug and play enclosure will accept up to 30 volt input, which can be sourced from the controller as it is shown here with the Maso G3. Drawing 24 volts from the G3 and an input and an output, there are only four wires to connect. Aviation connectors on both the magazine and the enclosure for a very easy installation. But I'm even more excited about our new workflow for Masso. With very little hardwiring, the subroutines are now able to recognize the current tool in the spindle, therefore it will automatically drop off the tool in the spindle before picking up the next tool, which was a major issue with the workflow previously. What it requires is wiring three outputs to inputs for the current tool logic. This would be up to a six pocket magazine. Above a six pocket magazine, it would require four outputs to inputs. They simply get wired straight across, represented by the black lines, connecting the inputs at the top to the outputs at the bottom. These are set up in the input outputs, and I'll be showing you that right now. They're set up in the software for the output to trigger the input. The subroutines use the inputs as bits so that it can recognize which tool is currently in the spindle. There's only one initial step to this process, and that is to initialize the current tool in the spindle upon startup. So let me demonstrate that for you now. We'll start Masso up. We've gone to servo motors for the dust cover, which run an initialization when powered on. So real briefly, we'll go to the MDI. Now I've got the dust cover wired in with the software to auxiliary input one, which is handy because it's got a button right here. I can click that and, the, and it opens the dust cover. The dust cover can also be controlled on an axis with a switch. Running it on an axis with a switch is nice because you don't have to remember to open the dust cover before you home. If you have it wired to an output, as I do here, you'll have to open the dust cover before homing. We're almost there in full communication with the G3, but it's going to take involvement by Maso to go the last mile. So we'll open the dust cover and home the machine. Now I've just recently vamp, revamped this machine, so my pockets are a little bit off, and I'm also going to be covering our new desktop app, which will allow you to, which will allow you to easily configure the positions, feeds, and speeds for the rapid change ATC workflow. Okay, the machine is honed. I'm going to go to the setup and just cover this real quick. We've got the infrared sensor to check for tool recognition wired to auxiliary 1. And I'll trigger that now and you can see auxiliary 1 when I break the beam. You'll see up here that output 2 I've named auxiliary 2 and input 3 I've named auxiliary 2. I've run a wire from output 2 to input 3, and I've designated them both as auxiliary 2. This is how the logic is set up. Output 3 is auxiliary 3, and it's wired on the G3 to input 4, which I've also designated auxiliary 3. Output 4 is auxiliary 4, and it's wired to input 5, which I've designated auxiliary 4. So with a six pocket magazine, you'll match auxiliary output pins to auxiliary input pins. It doesn't require a pull up resistor, it's just a wire running straight from pin to pin. And I'll show you what this does. If I go into the program MDI, 
There's a host of subroutines that are used to make this function. If I go into my folder, you'll see the first six files are initialization files. And I've named them with a zero at the beginning so that they pop up at the top of the list. In my workflow, I'm going to begin naming a prefix one to my NC files. That way, I don't have to scroll through all of the subroutine files. These are all of the subroutine files, which must be in the same folder as whatever file you're cutting. So on startup, you simply initialize whatever tool is in the spindle. So we're going to load this file, initialize tool 1, and you'll notice here that auxiliary 2, 3, and 4 are all low. When I run cycle start on this initialize tool 1, we see now that input 2 has gone high, input 3 and 4 are low. The subroutines will be able to read these pins and know which tool has been designated as the one in the spindle. If I come back here and initialize for tool 3, cycle start, now you'll see 2 and 3 have gone high. Further, we also have a show current tool file. Load that file, cycle start, and now we see that we have tool 3 in the spindle. We need to find the pocket. So I've found my pocket 1 position in X, Y, and Z engage is where I'm at right now. So let me show you the desktop app. So this is our alpha version of the desktop app, but I'll give a quick overview. You've got your units. I've got mine in millimeters. Safe clearance height, wherever you want the spindle to be when it begins to make a tool change. It'll rise to that position before moving across the table to the magazine or when it's finished. I've got five pockets. I'm aligned on X. Negative direction from pocket 1 to pocket 2. This is an ER11, so my pocket offset is 38. Pocket 1 was 288.45 and pocket Y was 185.2 we're going to change those values here there's an optional spin down dwell load RPM unload RPM engage feed rate I suggest 2000 regardless we've just found the new Z engage as I've extended my Z travel so let's find these values now Y remain the same. X changed to 288.1. So we'll fix that. That means our tool setter position is going to change. And that becomes a 0.1. Now our new Z engage is going to be negative 116.5. So we'll put that in. Negative 116.5. I want my spindle to start spinning before making contact with the clamping nut. So I'm going to set that to about 23 millimeters higher than the Z engage, which would be negative 93.5. Now Z move to load will be the height at which the spindle rises after it's dropped off a tool and moves to pick up the next tool. I'm going to go ahead and leave that at safe clearance of zero for now. Tool recognition. I've got it enabled. I've got the IR sensor all hooked up. It's on input 1, which correlates to auxiliary 1, not necessarily pin 1. Make that distinction. Same thing with the output. I've got this one set to output 1 here, but it relates to auxiliary 1 in the software, not pin 1 necessarily. So we have to find our tool recognition zones. And this is how that's done. We've got a clamping nut and tool on the spindle, and it's crucial that you do this with a clamping nut and a tool on the spindle. So we're going to raise Z until we clear the beam. And that should be close. Hit F1. 
Now we're breaking the beam as auxiliary one has gone high. So let's bring that up again. Now we've gone low, so we're just right there above the beam. And we're going to come down two millimeters. Actually, I think we'll go two and a half millimeters down. And it, auxiliary one is high, so we're blocking the beam. That will be zone one. And now we can see that we're basically at negative 82. Remember that all the values that you enter into the desktop app must be in machine coordinates, which is going to be this section right down here. Do not use the numbers from your work coordinates up here. You will crash your machine. C zone one, we're negative 82. Zone two is gonna be five millimeters higher, which will be negative 77. Our tool setter's already been set up, so we're good to go. We'll save the configuration and then generate. Now this is going to allow you to pick a folder, and I'm using this Masso subs folder. Select folder, subroutines generated. Those subroutines will go into the folder that you use to call the G-code programs from. Back to Masso, real quick, in our setup, under Tool Changer, we're using the Linear Tool Changer Type 2. And all the positions for your tools in the magazine, you will put the tool setter location in here. And we have to change our X, because I know that it's 38 millimeters from pocket 1. Point one. Unfortunately, you have to enter them all individually. And this is basically just used by Masso for the M6. When it receives the M6, it changes the tool in the UI and measures it to set the tool length offset. These values can all stay zeros. If you want to put a different feed rate in, Slot 7 I have reserved for the probe. If I put my 3D probe in there, it will not measure it. Save that. Save. Tools and offsets, just a refresher. Tool 1. You don't have to worry about the Z offset. This gets applied every time it measures the tool. But you have to set up your tools you can have any number of tools with a different name, but the slot number is the one that is going to correspond to the position in the magazine. Now I simply have to copy the new subroutines that I generated from the desktop app to the USB that I used to transfer the files to the Maso as I don't have a Wi-Fi connection for this G3. So we can load file, show current tool, Cycle start, current tool is 3, we have tool 3 in the spindle, it corresponds with Masso, tool 3. Now if we come down here, we want tool 2, we can load that, cycle start. Drop off tool two. You see the tool recognition messages popping up. Masso sets the tool length offset. Changes the tool number in the UI. If we come back over to show current tool. Cycle start. Now we have current tool is number two. Now to demonstrate the tool recognition. There is no current tool in pocket one. So I'm going to load 
the M6 file for 201. Cycle start. Dropping off 202. Now we're going to simulate a failure because there's no tool in pocket one. So this is the behavior if it fails to pick up a tool. Zone one load failure. At this point you would manually load the tool or if it didn't thread on all the way you would rectify that. Hit OK. Cycle start. Now we're going to grab tool 2 again and I'm going to simulate by blocking the beam should it fail to unload the tool. So we'll come over here, pick tool 2, load, cycle start. If it doesn't drop off the tool, the beam will be blocked and we get a message, zone 1 unload failure. You would then remove the tool by hand, hit OK, cycle start, it actually goes to check again, Masso measures the tool, updates the UI, and you're good to go. Thanks for watching, happy tool changes.